Hello, so this is Tony Cunningham, and I'm going to be talking about um, intellectual property. So uh, within this chapter, we uh, talked about copyright, and we had a special emphasis, of course, on uh, intellectual property. And today, uh, many of the things that we uh, use in our everyday lives um, are covered by copyright and trademark. Um, and this includes like, uh, like music, literature, uh, arts, clothes. Uh, things of that nature, anything that has any type of intellectual uh, process, um, intellectual work. Um, and for the music, um, of course, there's rights to the copyright holder, uh, which includes uh, the three rights, the basic rights, performance rights, uh, synchronization rights, and mechanical rights. And because of these rights, uh, the public has to abide uh, by these rules that are created by artists along with the Copyright Act of 19... 76. Um, of course, there are some exceptions here and there, of course, with re uh, record stores uh, that are selling uh, records. Um, they can play it for promotional reasons um, if they're selling that record, but uh, but other than that, you know, it just depends on the situation uh, with everything. Um, of course, there aren't many record stores now. Um, it's more uh, digital iTunes and Tidal and and stuff like that, people use those uh, online programs. So an example of how copyright law um, has caught up with some people in the music industry um, is the sampling case with, uh, with Vanilla Ice when he made Ice Ice Baby. And within this situation, uh, the song sold about five million copies in five months in total. Um, within the album itself, that uh, Ice Ice Baby was only, I think it was like 15 million copies that were sold. Um, and the song that was sampled was Under Pressure by, uh, Queen and da David Bowie. Yeah. Um, they, the dun, 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 that was sampled from that song. And because, uh, Vanilla Ice did not get the proper permission from Queen and David Bowie, um, he had to pay out millions of dollars. Um, they threatened to sue him, but he decided to. Uh, try and handle the situation outside of court. Uh, so yeah, and then a similar case was um, the actual um, what was the Graham Upright Music versus uh, Warner Brothers, uh, where Biz Marquis um, created a song, the Alone Again song, and he ripped the sample from the actual Alone Again song um, by Gilbert O'Sullivan. Um, and the song was was made uh, before he requested to use the sample. Um, and even though he didn't get cleared to use that sample from uh, Gilbert O'Sullivan uh, and the people that associate with him and his music, um, even though that happened, he still released the song anyways. Um, but because of this, uh, it went to court and uh, the court ruled against him in that situation. So uh, within this chapter, there's so, so many things that have occurred, um, different cases, different situations. Uh, but just through reading this chapter, it was quite interesting uh, to learn some of these things um, as far as copyright. Um, it has opened my eyes to some things um, and how us as people uh, do different things without knowing that we are actually uh, committing copyright infringement. Like, for example, um, I was reading about the Happy Birthday song, uh, which is under copyright and uh, actually is going to be releasing um, its copyright in 2030. Um, you can't really have some, you can't really have a group of people at a restaurant come out and sing you the Happy Birthday song because it's under copyright. Didn't know that. But from reading this chapter and, and deciphering everything and learning, uh, I come to the conclusion that a lot of the stuff, like I said, we do every day. Um, we're actually uh, infringing copyright law. So, uh, and with that, uh, it has made me change the way I do things in general. Um, and it makes me think about uh, whatever I need to do on a daily basis. So, yeah.